everybody. So I would like to welcome you in my first interview that I'm making. And today we have a special guest who came from California and his name is Adam Polman and uh, he works as a cuddle party facilitator. And he came now to Prague to make cuddle party and we would like to have some short interview to get you to know what is it about. So I would like to ask you if you can tell us a bit more about the cuddle party. Well, you know, there's two parts to a cuddle party. And um, one of the ways I like to explain it is to say that it's an advanced communication workshop that's cleverly disguised as a pajama party. So the first part is a workshop in communication and boundaries. Um, and then it is followed up with a practicum where you get to practice the new skills that you get in a cuddling environment. Mm -hmm. So in that sense it's a social event where you get to hang out with people and talk with them and um, hug, hold hands, whatever it is that you'd like to be doing. Mm -hmm. It is a place where people can get their touch needs met in a culture where people are really afraid to touch. Mm -hmm. And what makes your cuddle party different from other cuddle, par cuddle parties? I know that you work closely with Betty Martin and you bring some elements of uh, Wheel of Consent. Mm -hmm. So I would like you to talk a little bit more about that. Well, the difference between a cuddle party and a party where people are cuddling. Uh, I think that's what it is that you're asking me. And it really is, the, the difference is the welcome circle. When you come to a cuddle party, the first hour or so is really a, a very advanced communication workshop. And it's about really being able to regain your voice and your yeses and your noes and your, you know, I thought that I was going to enjoy that, but I really didn't. I've changed my mind. These are things that we're not taught in our culture. And they're really important. Um, the And this sets the stage for the cuddling part where um, you're going to ask somebody, it's like, you know, I would like to receive a shoulder rub. Would you be willing to give me a shoulder rub? Or maybe you would say, you know what, I feel like rubbing feet. How about I give you a foot rub? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I would say, hey, you know, you want a, you want a spoon? Let's you know, lay down here on the carpet and spoon for a little bit. Um, but the communication part sets up the ability to do that in a very conscious, a conscious way. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that if there is somebody who has a little bit of uh, problem with uh, boundaries, with saying no, with expressing the needs, so this would be a great place to come and explore that, right? Oh boy, did you just hit the nail on the head with that one. <laughs> That is really what it's about. Mm -hmm. So many people have a hard time, first of all, they have a hard time saying no to things that they, that they don't want. Almost anybody that you ask, have you ever said yes when you meant no? They're going to go, yeah. In fact, if you ask them in the last month, have you ever said yes when you meant no? Yeah. Now, so this is an important part about Cuddle Party is that we teach the value of no. Um, we don't like disappointing each other, you know? If, if you were to ask me, it's like, hey, would you take out the trash? I'm like, of course I want to do that, you know? I wouldn't want to disappoint you. If you were to say, would you be willing to take my car to the garage while it's being repaired and wait for it? I would probably say yes, even though maybe I didn't really want to do that because I wouldn't want to disappoint you. You're a friend of mine and I'd like to be able to help you out. So people do this all the time. In terms of touch, that happens as well. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't really feel like a hug, but you know, you're offering it, you know, so maybe I should just, you know, get in there and do, you know, do, so that you're not disappointed. Now, so that's a big part of Cuddle Party is learning how to say no, learning that a no is a gift. Um, like giving somebody directions, you know, if you were, if I were to say, hey, is this the bus that I get on to go to Prague? And you know that it's going the other way. 
you wouldn't feel bad about saying, no, Adam, that's not the, but you want the other bus to get on. It's good information for me. Now, the other side of that is the yes. People don't say yes to things that they really want, oftentimes because they don't think that they deserve it. Mm -hmm. So regaining your voice and being able to say, yes, I really would love that shoulder rub, even though you've done so much for me already, or um, yes, I really would like to go on that holiday. You know, even though maybe you're in size like, I didn't work hard enough, I should do something more. Uh, being able to regain your power to say yes and no in this world where, as children, that choice is taken away from us. Mm -hmm. That's a real important thing. The other part of that, which for me is even greater, is the ability to change your mind. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you ever had this happen, you went to the movies, you got a date there and everything's great, you get your arm up around the shoulder and it's all feeling wonderful and then the blood drains out of your arm. And you're stuck with this dead thing up there and it's like, oh, I don't want to move it because what will they think if I take my arm away? Everybody's had this experience. And the same thing on the other side, you got this arm over you like this and it feels really nice and then five minutes later it feels like it weighs 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be wonderful if you could say, you know, that was nice but I've changed my mind, I don't enjoy that anymore. Mm -hmm. In a way that is a gift to the other person. Mm -hmm. So ha owning your no's, owning your yeses, and really having the ability to change your mind. Those are important skills to have that we don't really teach. Cuddle Party is about teaching that and regaining that authority of your voice, your own autonomy, mm -hmm. to make cho choices for yourself. Mm -hmm. That sounds really amazing. I'm really happy to hear that it's much more than just about cuddling. So it's really an amazing place to practice the life skills, so important. Here's the thing that makes Cuddle Party kind of a unique workshop among workshops, is there's the beginning part, which is the information, the practice, mm -hmm. and there's icebreakers, it's fun, you get to goof around with the other people and become friendly. And then you get these teachings about yes, no, what if you're not sure, what do you do then? Mm -hmm. Our teaching is you say no, because you can change your mind later on. Mm -hmm. So you get this part, and then immediately afterwards, you get to practice. Mm -hmm. So many workshops, you get the teaching, and then you go home and you've got a notebook full of information, but when do you get to practice it? Mm -hmm. In a cuddle party, you get to practice it right away, and you get to be coached. There are people that are like, hey, you forgot to ask. And I'm like, oh yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. You know, can I hold your hand? Mm. Okay. And uh, like people might have different ideas when it comes to what's going on in the cuddle party. Uh, is, it, is it, can it be kind of sexual or does it turn that way? Well, first rule of cuddle party is you keep your pajamas on. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that it's impossible to have sexual energy come up, but it tends to, to slow it down a little bit. There's a couple of things that I add to that. One is that there's no touching in areas that would normally be covered by a bikini. Mm -hmm. And which means tummies are all right, but we'll leave the breasts and the genitals, no. Mm -hmm. um, the other is, the, a friend of mine calls it the eight-year-old rule, is if you wouldn't be comfortable doing this with an eight-year-old sitting next to you on the couch, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. Now. It doesn't mean that sexual energy doesn't come up. And one of the things that we say about cuddle party is, first of all, it's okay to like the people at a cuddle party. Mm -hmm. In fact, we want you to like people there. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to find people attractive uh, because attractive people will be there and that's a natural response. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to become aroused because that happens to people as well. But we have an agreement, a pact among all of us that we're not gonna act on that. If you notice that you're really turned on, great, celebrate that and then say, hey, you know what, I'm going to get up and go get a snack. Change your activity because we really want to stimulate the production of oxytocin, mm -hmm. which is the, the loving, feel-good um, hormone mm -hmm. and not the, the other ones that get you all turned on and wanting to be sexual. Mm -hmm. Okay.
What does it take if someone would like to be Carlo Party facilitator? Okay, so there's two parts to that. The first part is we want you to become trained as a facilitator. We tried in the past to just train people to do cuddle parties and we discovered that they didn't have the facilitation skills that they needed. So the first part is a course that we offer online called the Foundations of Facilitation. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a possibility to take this course on a three-day weekend. Um, but it's available to people online. And this is where you learn the skills to become an effective facilitator. Mm -hmm. After that, there's about a four-month practicum in learning the specifics about facilitating a cuddle party. And we do this because we want people to come to a cuddle party knowing that the person who's holding the space, that's creating the container, that's doing the teaching, is qualified and experienced. We're, we want to create a safe place for exploration. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, there's a rather complete set of skills that are required. Mm -hmm. And somebody wants to read more about it, uh, what is your website? Well, there's a, the primary website is cuddleparty.com. Mm -hmm. And there's also another website just about facilitation called the Foundations of Facilitation. Now I want to say something a little bit more about that mm -hmm. and that this is a valuable course even if somebody doesn't want to go on and become a cuddle party facilitator. If you're a facilitator of small workshops already or you would like to be, you've got an idea, you've gone to a bunch of workshops and you're like, wow, I can do that. I've got this great idea for a workshop. And then you sit down with a paper and it's like, what do I do first? What do I do next? How do I take this idea and turn it into a workshop. That's what the foundations of facilitation are all about. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, this can be taken as an online course where you get the information, but you don't get the practice. Um, periodically, every month or two, at some place, mostly in the United States, but occasionally in Europe, we offer a weekend training, which is really about the practice. Mm -hmm. being coached um, and practicing the skills of a good facilitator. And you get to see that in action in the cuddle party. Mm -hmm. yeah, sounds good. So, and also we have an event tomorrow here in Prague. So we have uh, the first cuddle party here. So then if you would like to make some invitation, then you can tell a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. One of my dreams is to travel the world having cuddle parties and leaving cuddle party facilitators behind to continue to do this work. Um, it's valuable as a one-time experience and I'm really happy to be having it. Thank you so much for inviting me to come here and do this. Um, it's even more valuable if it's something that you experience on an ongoing basis. Uh, people in, in my home in San Diego, I have a, a cuddle party about every month or so. And people who have come over a number of years say that the things that they learn at a cuddle party have changed their life. It changes how they relate with their friends, their family, their partners, their co-workers. Just regaining their, their voice and their choice in life has had a tremendous impact. And right now, because I travel a lot, I would always feel sad. It's like, oh, I'm leaving um, nobody to have a cuddle party. There are seven new cuddle party facilitators in training in San Diego, in the one city right now. Mm -hmm. And I would love to encourage people to come and experience the cuddle party. And then if they're inter interested, it's like, wow, I would like to do that. Um, we have a program for training people to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. So is there anything else you would like us to know? Yeah, there's one thing, and that is that going to a cuddle party is one of the least risky things that you can do. Um, at the end of the welcome circle, before the freestyle cuddling starts, there's an invitation to leave. So if you were to come to the cuddle party, and after the welcome circle, it's like, you know, that's great, but it's not for me. 
you get your money back. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed, anywhere in the world somebody is having a, a, uh, a, a cuddle party. And so you can give it a chance. Mm -hmm. Invest an hour or so, come and give it a try. If you don't like it, you leave, you get your money back. Mm -hmm. No risk. Yeah, that's good to know. Nothing, nothing but good things happening. And I can tell you in all of the time that I've done a cuddle party, one time somebody said that they wanted to leave. Mm. But they didn't want their money back. They thought they had gotten enough already. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So thank you everybody for watching and you are most welcome to join the cuddle party tomorrow. And have a nice day. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Boyte. My pleasure.